Monica. <laughs> yes, Allison. <laughs> when we're talking about the sinner, what? How did it come into your orbit? What made you want to do it? Um, I feel like you hadn't done a TV show in a while, except of course, your uh, your guest star role on BoJack Horseman and an amazing pop in on New Girl. Thank you. But obviously, <laughs> obviously BoJack. BoJack. Why the sinner? BoJack buddies. <laughs> Good BoJack buddies. Why the sinner? Why now? What made you respond to it? Well. The, the Sinner, when I, when I read the novel and initially, I was just so shocked and blown away that I could never understand where it was going. Mm -hmm. Every time I thought, okay, this is where it's heading. I know what this is. I know what's happening here. <laughs> left turn, right turn, left turn. And I, yeah. I just couldn't, I couldn't keep up with it, honestly. Had you read the book before the project in yes. your way. Yes. You so, had. The, so the novel the novel was given to me by UCP Universal Cable Productions, which uh -huh. is an amazing studio that I've had and I had an overhead deal with with my little production company and my producing partner Michelle. And our deal had sort of come to it, you know, the end of its term and then they they handed us this book and said, You have to check this out. Oh, wow. What do you think about this? And not only was the story just uh, so compelling yeah. and so intriguing, but the female character, this like lead, unreliable narrator mm -hmm. who, you know, as we peel away the psychological onion, she just becomes more complicated and more extreme, mm -hmm. more intense. Is she lying? Is she not lying? You know, yeah. all of these questions as you're going along through the book, and I just, I saw, I read it and I thought, oh my, I have to do this. Yeah. This is terrifying. Yeah. I don't think I can do it, but I, I need to at least try. <laughs> and then you developed attempt. it from there. So you were part of the development process throughout the whole thing. Yes. How true is the show to the book? Because as you're describing your experience reading it, that's how I felt watching it, where I was like, what? How are they going to explain? Oh my God, why did she? <laughs> yes. That's why. Yes. Like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's very similar in, in terms of that, that feeling and yeah. that, that path you're like going down the like they're leading you down this and then they make these hard left turns and yeah. you don't ex you don't see it coming yeah. um but uh we, we made some changes you know the, uh, the detective harry ambrose character played by bill pullman mm -hmm. that was a little less defined in my opinion okay and we really wanted to develop that to be a real, is like a real two-parter and not just, um, this is not just Cora's story. Totally, and the right? chemistry between you guys was really great and you want to see this person who believes in her. Absolutely. People don't usually stab other people because they're playing their music too loud. I realize that. And you can tell us anything, whatever you can. I feel like Glow and The Sinner are like polar <laughs> opposite shows because our show is like very positive and light and we're like screaming at the top of our lungs and we have glitter all over our faces. And you just had to be like just gutted every day. Was well, it, that's did you? <laughs> that's true. There was a lot of snot and yeah. a lot of, <laughs> a lot of like fluids, facial fluids the snot coming keeps out. It very realistic, I find. I agree. It yeah. was a real um, natural, uh, authentic element yeah. to the whole thing. <laughs> but don't, don't, not. I mean, we can't not say that just because this is emotional and like crazy emotive. What you guys are doing in that show, <laughs> let's get serious. This is no joke here. True. I mean, physically yeah. and emotionally, because comedy. Stems from tragedy, right? Definitely. And stems from like a real sense of, of, of truth. Absolutely. And pain. Absolutely. I feel like that's what, what drew me to the Glow script immediately. And Glow was not a book, but it was a real show, which I had never oh, heard of before. Right. It was a real show that was made in 1985 and was like real hot for about four years. And, um, you know, so I heard about the concept, which was, you know, Genji Cohen is producing a show about a women's wrestling television show in the 80s. And I was just like, I must be on this show. <laughs> um, I feel like already <laughs> it sounded just so unique and unlike anything I had heard of. And then I got the script and in the pilot episode, there's so much going on for this character. Mm -hmm. You catch her 
sort of down on her luck in a really low point in her life. And then there's this amazing twist and her this horrible betrayal with her friend, right. which was totally intriguing to me. Like in one episode, and I only got to read one episode before signing on to do oh, the whole show. Yes, um, that's that's nerve wracking. But it had everything in one episode. There right. were like amazing comedic moments, amazing dramatic moments, a relationship between two women mm -hmm. that was very compelling, mm -hmm. and then wrestling. Right. So it was just Don't sort of that part. <laughs> like the craziest thing I could ever imagine. You know what I was thinking about when I was thinking about Glow and The Sinner is actually that these two female characters, they both kind of do a crazy thing first episode. Definitely. Right? I mean, <laughs> a little bit on different, different scales ways. and in different ways, but, but still, you have to follow your character. You have to make her likable. I was just gonna say, it's a real journey mm -hmm. to like win the audience back over after right. the initial episode. That's so true, and you're right. It's interesting watching The Sinner because it's so intense, the thing that she does, that even as a viewer, you're like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna feel about this woman? Right. And that's sort of what makes these characters so exciting to play. I feel like I love that people love to hate Ruth or, do, or just are not sure how they feel about her. Right, it's a conflicting thing. I felt conflicted about Ruth yeah. because I felt that it was such a massive betrayal and I didn't see it coming. Yeah, at it all. was a big surprise. It was such a big surprise. Yeah. And I remember I was watching with my husband and I was like, Whoa, no, she didn't. No. It I was so, it really shocked me. <laughs> and it's it's funny because it doesn't matter whether you're doing a drama, whether you're doing a, a comedy, a dramedy, whatever. I don't even know how to Definitely. term you know sure. what term it is anymore sure. because it kind of melds in between the world. Totally. Is that it's it, it's not easy to play either of these things and it's coming from a place of truth and pain and absolutely and experience. Yeah. And these are flawed people. Definitely. Which I is was going to interesting. When you said I didn't know how to feel about and then you said Ruth, but I thought you were going to say Cora and I was like because playing the character <laughs> I was like you didn't. <laughs> playing the character, I feel like it is what you're talking about where it's all about their truth in the moment. You have to be on their side mm -hmm. and understanding what's going on with them and sort of fighting for them to be mm -hmm. understood. Uh, you have to, it's almost like, it's anyone who's ever playing a villain. I mean, in a sense, these characters, well, you're kind of a really, Definitely. Ruth is quite a villain at some, she is. In some levels. Cora, for sure. Is. <laughs> for sure, but any villain doesn't believe that they're the villain. You really believe that, well, I must take over the world, or yeah. God has told me to do something, and there's this a higher is my, purpose to what it, I am doing. Exactly. And here's why I believe in myself. I'll fight you. Who's that? Who's yelling from the audience? You heard me. I said, I'll fight you. Who? Oh, you? Bored housewife in dress? Yeah. Well, you've been working for a really long time. Yes. How but, young and, were you? But you know what? Not that young. Not, I feel like we're the same age, I think, and I feel like you started working as a teenager. I mean, I was working as a teenager. I was, yeah. Seventh Heaven for me was 14. I started at 14. Wow. So and kind of here's an school. interesting piece of trivia. Um, after I graduated from CalArts, I, or I guess before I graduated during the summer, I spent a summer doing background work on shows, and I was a extra. No. I was a background actor on Seventh Heaven. Oh, my like, God, that's amazing. Season. I don't think you were even I on the show anymore. I wasn't even on the show then. And I just like, had a backpack. Going <laughs> through like the lockers. 22 years old, just like, Down the school hallway. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Anyways. Small world. So different, so different type of work for me at an early age. Right, um, yeah, but you know what, still experience. <laughs> yes. And SAG card. <laughs> Union. Starting at 14, do you feel like you've seen a crazy change over the years? Or like, I mean, certainly currently, we're in a moment of great change. And yes. have you felt like that's been gradual and happening all this time? Or do you think this is a unique moment? That's a good question. Has it been a gradual change? Um, I have to be honest, when I was, when I was young and working, in my teens, I think I was so unaware of so many things. Working. I mean, I was just a kid, yeah. you know? So yes, work was fun. It, was, it wasn't it was necessarily just like a game per se, but it, it was really fun. And yeah. I don't think I really understood how challenging 
it is sure. to be in this business because I had a lot of luck when I was when I was little. Mm -hmm. um, and as I've gotten older and seen some of this gradual change, and now really see how lucky it is to be a working actor in this yeah. in this city and a working actress specifically, that's now I can really see wow, how far we've come. And I think specifically yeah. from television back in the 90s and the early 2000s to now, mm -hmm. you know, you, you didn't cross over. You weren't allowed to sure. do television and film. That's a great point. Just the you respect were, that television garners now It's another so thing. Different. It's so different. And do you feel like there are more great roles for women now? Because I feel like maybe yes. that's the thing that I've noticed the most. And it's... It, again, very spoiled getting to work on GLOW. So I know my perspective is right. I'm like, every show now is just 14 women. <laughs> like I know that that's not fully the right. case, but I do think Genji Cohen as a producer is making great strides and like casting a wide breadth of uh, types of women, different yes. shapes and sizes, different races, different yes. ages, and giving them all like fleshed out characters, play, letting them play real people with a variety of emotions, not stereotypes. Absolutely. Um, not that, I mean, you know, I've been very lucky as well, I think, to work on really fun shows and shows. I think that Mad Men was great at showing a strong, I loved uh, you know, show. complex female characters. Uh, oh my gosh, such a, such a great, such a great place to, to really be able to use your muscles as an actress. I think that show was so special. Absolutely, thank you. And I loved you on that show and loved that show like, wholeheartedly. It was so, that was like the first show I worked on after college, really like my first real job. And it did sort of feel like doing theater because mm -hmm. we were so specific with the dialogue mm -hmm. and everything like that. And the characters were so complex and it was fun to watch the characters grow and change over the seasons. I mean, that's the best the thing years. about television, right? Is that you get to invest in these people and then they change and evolve and yeah. betray people and you see their flaws and you relate to them because we're all just flawed people in general. Definitely. Um, but, but I do feel like now more than ever, <clears throat> there are great roles for women in television yes. across the board and for different types of women and letting yes. women do different types of things on GLOW, the fact yes. that we're in the ring wrestling and that it's about showing women's bodies in a really different way, mm -hmm. in a strong way, but not masculine. Right, like holding you know? onto your power, yeah. that feminine power, but Harnessing also- it in a different way. And you using your body in a way that is, it, I mean, it's in, inherently very appealing and and sexy, but it's but it's not a it's not an objectifying situation, you know. Definitely, you are saying, "Look at me, you know, hear me control. roar. I'm going to yeah. take you down." <laughs> now, come on, that must be so intense for you, all of you guys. It's so fun. Oh, I bet it's fun. But it's the most fun job out I've all ever had. day long, every yeah. day, and no, and train I was saying, this all is the, the time. coolest thing. And in terms of something that's great about having women. Uh, bosses. You know, Liz Flayhive right. and Carly Mensch created our show. They're our showrunners. Uh, Genji Cohen is a producer. Tara Herman. We have like a lot of women behind the scenes. And so one of the great things about getting cast that. on this show is like the first thing that they told everyone is we want you to be able to do your own wrestling. It's very important to the show. We want, to, we want you guys to do the moves. But we don't want you to change your bodies. Mm. We want all different body types Amazing. represented on this show. We cast you. We like you for who you are. Than, than me, oh. I was like, thanks, that's so nice. I'm gonna go train every right, day. Like, oh. <laughs> I mean, Biceps. I, but it really was a different way of, of thinking you're about right. no, my body right. as a woman in this industry. Um, coming from, I think, years of thinking, I have to be really skinny mm -hmm. to get a part. I have to mm -hmm. be really sexually appealing mm -hmm. for men to want to cast me. Right. Um, and this felt much more uh, geared towards strength and it really changed the way I was working out and the way I was training mm -hmm. was like, I wanna be strong so I can execute these moves at my new job where I get to right. do this cool, powerful thing. Right. It was not at all about how I looked. What that freedom. was like, that it was like the like, icing on the cake was like, right. and I look great. Right, I look amazing. But it didn't start out but it's not about that. That's right, and I think, what if, what, what freedom, honestly, because I yeah. I, I feel like I've, I've done many jobs where it, there was a physical element to it mm -hmm. and it wasn't, it wasn't like someone said to me, you have to lose weight or you have to do this, even though that's people hear that all the time, yeah. I think, in this business. Yeah. I think women, we hear that a lot. And I would also argue that even if no one's saying it to you specifically, 
there you just know. There yes. are sort of pressures that have been put on women for a long time, and I think they're starting to change as people are looking at beauty in a different way. I agree. You know, but I think that I, I would only, I can only imagine as a teenager feeling the pressure of wanting to look good in a bikini. Certainly. You know? I, I remember feeling that pressure. I mean, I still feel that pressure, but I guess that's... I mean, me too. It doesn't just totally go away. Not no, when I'm doesn't. at work. Not when I'm at work on GLOW. Right. But as soon as we wrap the show, it's like, <laughs> where's my next job? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange business that we're in. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I think people forget that sometimes, you know, we have these, these amazing jobs and they come to an end. Yeah. And then you are an out of work actor again. Immediately. You are out of work and you have to start over <laughs> and you have to go back to auditions and you have to deal with the com com competition yeah. and the competitive quality and, and, and having to, you know, you have to have that confidence within yourself. And yeah. luckily now I, I really do feel that, like you're saying, body types, um, all kind, all cultures, mm -hmm. from pe pe women all over the world. You can make shows and you can tell stories on television specifically, yeah. and somebody wants to finance that and they want to tell the story. And it is exciting. And I yeah. feel an excitement. I feel like a, a you know, a feels like energy this wave, a wave has, has been of, building. Something and happening. Now there's this thing happening, and totally. And I almost think it takes the edge off of even the competition of it all because women yes. have come together in such a it, way in these does. last we're these not last year. I think there's there's been this kind of feeling it's I don't even know how to describe it exactly but maybe you you feel this too that yeah. Well, we shouldn't all be in the same room together, and oh, we can't talk to each other because totally. you guys are up for the same role. So, totally. you know, watch out. You know, this kind of thing. Yeah. And I really did used to feel that a little bit, like we were all against each other, and yeah. now it feels like we're all at arms around each other, going, "Uh, try it." Totally. Just Come try at it, me, bro. Please. I feel... We're all here, standing shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> like wanting to put each other to work. And that's what's really cool, what you're saying with all these amazing showrunners and women behind the scenes and behind the cameras, we're, we're hiring each other. And yeah. it's so great. <laughs> totally. It's so much fun. I do think it, it's that feeling is making it easier to make strides uh, with things like the wage mm -hmm. gap. Because yep. in the past, I mean, to me, it just was some, I would never talk about that with other actresses or other actors no, I wouldn't and even that. with my agent would probably be like whatever you think I deserve yes <laughs> it's such a hard thing to discuss people hate talking about money mm -hmm. and I do think as actresses we've been made to isolate ourselves and think that women are the enemy and like it's just not true it's so it's not true nice to open up those conversations it's the only way to make change I guess well, yeah, I mean, we... <laughs> I really also, said that with conviction. <laughs> to make a change, I guess. I guess, trickle off. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it also... It's, I, we can't be so hard on ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have to feel that our community supports us and, and as we're putting out the best work we can and the best intention we can into mm -hmm. our work and into whatever it is we're doing in our communities, that it's being reciprocated. Yeah. And if it's not being reciprocated, then how do we feel that confidence and that power to say, yeah. you know what, I'm not comfortable not getting paid as much as he's getting paid, and I'll step away from this project, yeah. or whatever it is. And I think it's taken a long time for the community to sort of help push us up to yeah. say that, and I feel that that's changing now too. Have you ever been in a position where you felt like you had to say that or could say that? Or have you, I don't know. You know, I have not said it before. Yeah, I neither. honestly don't even know if I knew what somebody else was yeah. getting paid. I probably have had many experiences, and you probably have too, where someone, it, it was a- Definitely was getting paid. This I, portion of, of pay. It's true, I think the tough thing for me is like, you know, when you're building a career, you're often working with people who have a lot more experience. And the way that people get paid in our industry is based on previous work and right. experience and a quote that you already have in theory. I don't know if that totally exists as much anymore. So, yeah, I think I, I've never asked about it. I've just assumed, like, Me obviously too. they're getting paid more and it's fine. Right. Um, Me too. I think it, it's coincided. This, this, 
moment where people are asking those questions more is just happily coinciding again with me working on this very female forward show and like having more of an awareness about it and not having to ask for that because I think, you know, it's, it's, it's happening the right way. Right. Stop. I can't hear you. How do you know Frankie? Stop it! Stop it! Fame is such a weird thing to talk about for me, and I would imagine it's very different for you in terms of dealing with fame outside of your work. Like, I don't think enough, I feel like for me, any type of fame that may exist near me um, just solely comes from the work that I've done. So. I feel like, and, and, and certainly I've tried to craft it that way in terms of like b being a kind of a private person and, and really trying to focus mm -hmm. stuff on my work. So I feel like it's nice for me, it's more like if people are gonna say something, it's recognize me, it's because of a role. Love your show or yeah. appreciate your work. Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I was, sometimes I think back, back to some of the things that I've done in the past and. I don't want anyone to see it. People just like, me. oh my god, it's <laughs> Jessica from or it's that, or it's that movie. or it's it's just a Jessica, and it's usually the wrong one, which is what sure. I get a lot, which I actually think is actually really fun. You know, Brie Larson and I get that. That's too. kind of confusing. It's, I could yeah, see the name yeah. sort of the, the backward, <laughs> forward, front, last. Yeah. Um, fame. I. It's a it's a weird it's, thing to talk. It's about. It's a weird thing to talk about. I feel like I've experienced a, some level of it mm -hmm. ever since I was young. Yeah. So there's, and I think maybe maybe you have this experience too. Is it it somehow becomes a little bit you get used to it normal ish ish. Mm -hmm. Not that you'll ever really get fully used to it. Yeah. But there is an element of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's interesting, and it's also I feel like it's sometimes it can kind of make you feel like you can't really be you. Sure. You know, if you're out and about and you're with your friends and, and you can feel some energy and someone is... And then you think, oh, I gotta be... Something. Get this something out of my nose. Right, I can't pick my nose Someone right might now. take a photo with their phone. <laughs> take a photo. <laughs> or it's just, I, you just can't, like, if you feel like you want to be boisterous or you want to yeah. be wild and, <laughs> and have fun and, and... It has to be in a controlled environment. It has to be in a controlled environment. So that's, a, I feel like, an interesting element of fame that I remember as a younger person yeah. fighting against a little bit. Was that hard when you were, like, turning 21? Yeah. And, yeah. It was. It was It was hard because I just wanted to be a crazy 21 year old. Yeah. You know? And any, I would imagine any person you're seen holding hands with, then that's a rumor about something. Like when you're a teenager, you want to just live your life and, yes, you know? Yes. True. And also, it, but it was very different. You know? Yeah. We, it wasn't really, sure. it wasn't, first of all, it wasn't um, like course. video based, right? There was, of course, internet, yeah. but there wasn't that camera phone yeah. and there wasn't such a huge online presence. Yeah. Um, where you know everyone can say anyone can say anything and yeah. um, anyone can be judgmental or whatever. It really wasn't like that when I was a teenager. So that evolution has been an interesting thing to to More watch. Negative. Well, well <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, but people, if you have this experience either, but people have said to me before, well, you know what you were getting involved in. That is a common, and you're like, right? and you're like yeah, yeah, but that doesn't give people really. full the full right to just fully invade my, my life at any time. Space or and maybe life. it does. Certain people believe, right? Those people who are doing it maybe <laughs> believe that <laughs> right. they do have that right. Right. But true, it's sort of like, well, sort of, but also, we saw, you know, really, we wanted to do this job. I feel like for me, it's just That's I just want to act and do this job. And the thing is that success in this career can come in the form of fame and so Or it comes like hand in strange. hand a little bit in some sometimes. Yeah. If you get enough success you have this some kind of semblance of fame. Sure. And it, I mean when when I was a lot younger, that you really couldn't say, Oh, you know what you were getting into because 
it was it different. didn't exist yeah in that yeah. same way sure there was maybe somebody taking a photograph of somebody super famous but you know that <laughs> getting was, an autograph yeah I remember like getting Kevin Costner's autograph when I was like 10 what did I need his autograph for who cares it was Kevin <laughs> Costner it's I exciting had to, I had to have it <laughs> but not a photo it is right it, the funny it's thing is you're right really that it because they go hand in hand it can also be sort of a weird barometer mm -hmm. for like when you're doing well, right. oh my God, they love the show. That's so cool. Like, right. yeah, exactly. I would say it that's the positive. positive side of social media and that sort of stuff is like seeing right. people dressed in glow costumes for Halloween was really no, that's exciting. Super cool. But that certainly, really cool. Or also it's maybe twofold. having having a platform that you can say something that's important. Absolutely. Um, that that's better can... than what I said. Definitely. Well, that's no. The <laughs> seeing people dressed as me for <laughs> Halloween, it's amazing. You're like, or doing great things for the world. Or helping people. In the world, no, believe me, Halloween. When you have, you don't have any kids. No, do you have kids? No, but I have nephews. Right, so you know, Halloween is a big deal when you have kids. It is, yeah. So I think it's cool. I yeah. want to be you for Halloween. <laughs> now I just have to convince my son that we yeah. can be you for Halloween because yeah. we're still stuck on some other stuff for Halloween. But I, that's get another, that. that's I get that. Another talk on our show. <laughs> this is for next week's show. Yeah, for ne <laughs> next week. You think you got me, but then I come back around with these soon-to-be-famous rough. Toilet paper! Ah! And then, you know, it's fight, fight, fight. I'm bad, you're good. I'm winning. Ah! Ah! Well, it's interesting with this fame conversation because I, I was gonna say that um, outside of my work, the reality of it more comes into orbit for me in regards to my husband. Right, of course. You know, which is a strange way to experience that kind of stuff right. when it kind of has nothing to do with you. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> which I think I experience all the time as well. Yeah. With my husband. Um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, it's um, it's a weird thing to be sort of on the fringe of it, but I love that. Do you? I actually love when I, it's <laughs> when it all something. about him. I'm like, I will take the photo. I love that. I, yes. I often. love taking the photo. Totally. Yeah, and, I don't and if And if they're either. really nice, I take a good one. And if they're not, I just, just cut them all out. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I do. Wow. See, well, and I really. always take a good one because I'm like, I don't want them to ask again in five well, minutes. That's true. <laughs> I have had people come back and say, you kind of messed it up. And so I, that's you know, it's, you're... it's not a good plan. It's a, it's a terrible plan. Um, how do you guys navigate working together or do you work together often or do you, no. or like your work schedules because you have a child? Right. One the, child. One. Just yeah. one. <laughs> The work schedule thing is really, really challenging. I don't I know would, how you feel in we your have life. Two cats, so it's, it's hard not enough. As, it's not as difficult. But still, <laughs> still, someone has to watch the cats when you're out of town. Definitely. Um, you know, we have worked together. Oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. I I just did a little thing in his in a music video that he just did for one of his songs. Cool. Which was really fun and kind of non-invasive. You know. Did it feel like? he was the boss and you wanted to like get it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but only in a way that I think I would feel if it if it was my director or it right. was it was fun. But also it's like your best friend. Yeah, and I felt yeah. I felt like I could tell him and say anything and he would, you know, respect it and and <laughs> sure you're like, I don't want to do that. He would be fine. Yeah. You know, so we had it we had a really good time but we've never worked together in really any other capacity. Yeah. Besides that and he scored my my film that I produced with my with my producing partner wow. so it was really his world and we kind of I sort of stepped back and oh, let him do his right. thing well, and like I don't I know, know what you're to, amazing at this I'm like just do your Please. thing you're gonna yeah. be great and he did it and it was yeah. amazing so we've only worked together like that I don't know have you guys worked together we have we've oh, done wow. a couple movies together <clears throat> we did the disaster arts together we did a movie called um, right. of course called I love like, it. I know, I'm me. like, did Just a movie me. about nuns together <laughs> called... <laughs> I'll think of it. Yeah. Why can't I remember the name of my... Oh, it's called The Little Hours. We've done a couple movies together. We did uh, The Disaster Hours together. Right. We did a movie Which called I The Little love. Hours. Thank you. <laughs> we did a movie called The Little Hours about nuns in the 14th century. It's a fully improvised comedy. Wow. Shocked you haven't seen it. Uh, <laughs> it's actually- Well, I live under a rock. I, no, it was a very small movie and I loved working on that. And we shot it in Italy and it was actually wonderful oh. to do it together. I have had nothing but great experiences working with Dave because it's just nice to have your person with you, mm -hmm. I think. Especially on a job like that, we were kind of shooting with friends, but kind of in the middle of nowhere and nice to have the person you trust more than anyone, even just to check in about, is that crazy when I just 
connected or, right. you know, things like that. And but I think that's kind of unique in some some relationships. Like it, that's such a gift. It's so that you nice. can. It sounds like you're able to talk about the work. Yeah. And not feel embarrassed or you know whatever to, it may be. Definitely, I feel like um, he was great about. Well, <laughs> in terms of the talking about the work, I feel like gr I like to talk about everything, and he likes to not talk as much about it. <laughs> right. So like that sounds it about really right. He <laughs> was pulling teeth for me to be like, let's rehearse the scene the night before. I'd be in bed, be like, just read the lines with me, just read the lines with me, and he'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll just do it on the day. <laughs> like, just read it two times. It sounds very... But pull it out of him. It sounds like really male, female. female. Definitely. I'd be like, let's talk about the characters more. And he'd be like, no. Oh, it's <laughs> done already. <laughs> ah. But there was, I guess, maybe we shot the disaster artist first. There definitely was some anxiety going into our first time mm -hmm. working together as actors on the same set, acting, because... I guess you know that you sort of have like an onset persona mm -hmm. and hopefully if you're like true to yourself that character is not far from you as a person but yes. like everybody works in a different way and I think there was a small fear of like when we get on set what it is he going to be weird is he going to be right. is he not going to want to talk at all right, like I think right. I went into it very respectful of like I'm just going to give him space and see what's going on right are our, our, our onset Persona's gonna click and have right. good chemistry and like are we gonna want to eat lunch together? Chemistry? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> we, I'm pretty sure we shared a trailer we, well, oh, well, wow. while we were shooting Disaster Artist because I was supposed to have like a tiny little shoebox and I was like, I'm gonna be in your room. Yeah. And thank God it went. It was great. I feel like right away we were both like, oh, actually, it's really mm. nice to have you here oh, and all so good. the work when we're acting with each other, it has to be really honest. Like I can't bullshit you. Right, because you can see right through me. Totally. So very quickly sort of was like, oh, so I'm just going to really be real. Yeah. <laughs>